So now as we continue our discussion on angiosperms, we're going to now entitle this next flowchart Angiosperms 4, which we're going to focus on the life cycle of angiosperms. Now the life cycle of angiosperms is a very complex process, much like the gymnosperm life cycle that we saw, the pine life cycle that we illustrated in our previous flowcharts. But for right now, what we're going to do is break down this life cycle into the female side of the story and the male side of the story. And what we're going to do first is the female side of the angiosperm life cycle by specifically talking about how we eventually get to a female gametophyte structure. Because remember, we need to get to a female gametophyte structure even though as angiosperms we are primarily and dominantly sporophytic in our sort of overall plant-like quality. So we have to get to the gametophyte structure. And we're going to do this in the following mechanism and manner. First and foremost, what's going to happen is you're going to have an ovary. The plant is going to have an ovary structure and that ovary is going to be, as we said, with one or more ovules. So within the ovary are one or more ovules. So now we're looking at the larger ovary structure, which is a part of the overall, let's say, plant uh, reproductive uh, structure. Then within that we have one or more ovules. Now, taking it a step further, now within each ovule, we have to state the following. Within each ovule, we have a megasporangium, so we are, of course, when we think megasporangium, we are at the female side of the story, and that's exactly what we're doing. We have a megasporangium structure that's going to possess within it with a megasporocyte. So the megasporangium is a part of the ovule. The ovule is a part of the ovary. And within all of this is the megasporocyte. This is of interest to us because this is initially going to be a diploid cell, sporocyte. Sporo always was referring to the diploid stage of these angiosperms whenever you see sporo. From this point forward, what's going to happen is the following. I will tell you that this megasporocyte eventually turns into and develops into four haploid megaspores. So now we have changed our terminology. Keep that in mind. We have gone from a megasporocyte into a megaspore, four of them. How has this happened? How have we gone from diploid to haploid? That's, of course, going to be labeled via meiosis. So this is an important part of this process. There's a meiotic division that happens in order to go from a megasporocyte to a megaspore. How many of them? Actually, four megaspores are going to be formed. Of these four, three of them will actually disintegrate. They will just sort of go away and die off. But one of them, so it's sort of a, a fail-safe mechanism that's about to happen. One of them out of the four is going to be functional. So one will be functional. It will be successful and it will be the one necessary for the continuance success. That functional haploid megaspore is going to undergo three mitotic divisions. So just to put this into perspective, when we have one cell go under three divisions, we go from Let's say, just do this over here very quickly. This is one cell. We're going to do a mitotic division. So that one cell is going to turn into two cells. That's one mitotic division, one arrow. We're going to do another mitotic division. This is the second one. Two goes to four. We doubled up because it's another doubling mitotic process. Then finally, in our last mitotic division, number three, each arrow represents the mitotic division. We go from four to eight, a basic sort of exponential growth that we're doing. One, two, four, and eight, two to the third power, essentially. And so now we have overall we call them eight haploid nuclei. That's our final sort of side of the story for our initial look at the female side of the life cycle of angiosperms. Now, these eight haploid nuclei are now going to be a part of a different side of the female gametophyte. We still haven't gotten to this specifically. Now we're going to transfer our knowledge over here by stating the following. A mature gametophyte a structure that is absolutely necessary for the reproductive reproduction, successful reproduction of angiosperms is going to be a very weird structure that we've actually never seen before. A mature gametophyte is equal to something known as an embryo sac. And specifically, it's going to be with this awkward and sort of unique seven cells. It's going to be an embryo sac with seven cells, but 
it's also going to have eight haploid nuclei. So how can you possibly have seven cells but eight haploid nuclei? Shouldn't you have eight cells and eight haploid nuclei? Well, now we're going to answer that sort of discrepancy by looking at and dissecting the seven cell, eight haploid nuclei um, consequence a little bit further. First and foremost, what's going to happen is the following. There are going to be six of these seven cells. Six of those cells are going to be with a single nucleus, okay? So we have six cells with a single nucleus. That would mean six cells with six total nuclei. This is going to, within these six cells, have one cell that's going to be an egg cell. This is going to be important, and we're going to box this, box this in, actually. So of these six cells, one of them is an egg cell. This is a critical, critical part of this because that egg cell is essentially the gametophyte that we're looking for that eventually will get fertilized. So let's box that, box that in and keep that in mind. Three of them are going to turn into what we call antipodal cells. Three of these six are antipodal cells. These are simply going to disintegrate. They're going to go away. They're just going to be a pro part of the overall process that just goes away. And then one, two of these, so we have one plus three, that's four. That means two are left out of the six that we're studying right now. Two of them are going to be known as synergid cells synergid cells. What's the purpose of these? These are actually going to disintegrate, but their disintegration is going to cause a very, very important uh, consequence, and that consequence is as follows. Once these two synergid cells disintegrate, they actually release very specific chemicals. They essentially are going to give this message, this chemical message, that is going to be critical. So release chemicals, critical, in pollen tube growth direction. Remember, we haven't gotten to the male side of the story, but what's going to happen is the pollen tube has to grow towards the ovary. The ovary is where the fertilization will take place. But in order for that to happen, you need a message to be sent. The synergid cells disintegrate, they release chemicals. Those chemicals are going to tell the pollen tube that's a part of the pollen grain of the male side of this plant that pollen tube is going to be told to grow in the correct direction because of this disintegration that came originally from these six cells. So we have one egg cell, three antipodal, two synergid cells important in directing the growth of the pollen tube. One egg cell will be fertilized eventually. So right now I've covered six cells, but I still have one more cell, right? I said seven. We did six. What is that one cell? That one cell that's left is called a central cell. So there's going to be something known as a central cell, very easy to remember because that central cell is large. It's actually going to be with two nuclei. Two separate nuclei are going to be within it. So we have six cells with six nuclei, okay, but we have eight total to keep in mind. Right now we have the seventh cell, which is called our central cell. We can put a seven above it just to remember. That's going to have two nuclei. So we have two nuclei, six nuclei here. We get to that final eight number as we stated before. So this is why we have this weird orientation of seven cells, eight nuclei, because one cell has two nuclei within it called the central cell. This central cell is going to be critically important because this is going to be where we have an egg cell, and also, I failed to mention that these two nuclei are now going to be referred to as polar nuclei. Now, in this structure, we will have an egg cell and a central cell. So there's an egg cell that's important. So now we have two egg cells. This is kind of weird. Two egg cells are being mentioned here for a reason, which we'll see later on. Two egg cell plus a central cell, that's the other part, are going to be directly involved in fertilization. And what I'll, we'll see what I mean by directly involved um, a little bit later when we actually look at the double fertilization event that's going to occur. So these are directly involved in fertilization. So hopefully you can understand where we are in terms of scope, how we make the female gametophyte. We end up with two egg cells, thus two female gametophytes that are going to be important later on when we actually undergo that uh, fertilization event. Finally, last thing about the life cycle to get out of the way is the male gametophyte. It's a lot simpler on the male side of this angiosperm reproductive structure story. The male gametophyte is going to be located within the anther region. So the anther is going to be the larger structure that's going to house within it the microsporangia. Specifically, that microsporangia 
will be of a diploid uh, ploidy state. So it's going to have 2n. What's going to happen, of course, is you've got to eventually develop microsporocytes. So microsporocytes will be developed here, but I will tell you that these microsporocytes are going to actually be found within the microsporangia and they will undergo meiosis just like the microsporocytes the megasporocytes I should say underwent meiosis over here via meiosis so what's the result of microsporocytes undergoing meiosis that would be of course microspores forming so these are our male structures microspores are characteristically going to then further develop into eventually pollen grains and that is our male gametophyte we have gotten to that point we have pollen grains pollen grains are actually going to be considered an immature form of the male gametophyte so I'll just write male gameto for short and so final point about the pollen grains is that they contain two distinct parts and this is going to be important because we have two distinct egg cell parts and it's easy to remember that pollen grains also have two parts for that reason they have a part known as a tube cell which we briefly mentioned before that tube cell is going to develop into a pollen tube how does that pollen tube know where to go when it does fertilization well that's because of this remember the chemical is released and then of course on the other side there's going to be one more part to this pollen grain known as the generative cell so two cells within a pollen grain it's an immature male gametophyte the generative cell is going to actually be formed and it actually undergoes mitosis the reason why it undergoes mitosis is because it's originally a haploid cell and it's originally one sperm cell if one sperm cell undergoes mitosis it's simply going to double itself up and turn into two sperm cells. There is our mature gametophyte structure. In couple with the pollen tube is going to be important in order for us to take this box, fertilize this box, and fertilize that box as we'll see in the double fertilization part of this life cycle. And that covers our angiosperm introduction to formation of gametophytes in the angiosperm life cycle.